Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here bringing you four of my absolute favorite herbs to have in my own personal stash, but also definitely for any kind of long-term stash, planning, disaster, SHTF, whatever, these herbs are nutrition powerhouses in addition to being highly effective for some common things that might come up in any kind of uh, disaster scenario or whatever. I think these particular herbs would be so great to have on hand for any kind of problem. But also, like I said, daily use. These are great to start using right now to get the body deeply nourished, adrenals nourished, nerves nourished, everything to get ourselves set up to be as strong as possible for whatever may come our way. Also to feel happy and feel good while we do it. So let's go ahead and get right into these four herbs. And then afterwards, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some long-term storage stuff. And then also a little bit about another little bit about why I picked these four in particular for prepping. And so anyway, let's get right into it. Uh, first up, we have alfalfa. So this is Medicago sativa. This is grown oftentimes as a livestock feed. Um, and it is extremely nourishing, which is probably why they do that. This is actually typically used more for a food and a vitamin, um, vitamin rich thing, especially for convalescents who need easily assimilable, assimilated, assimilatable, assim my gosh, easily absorbed nutrients. <laughs> there we go. Um, and so this is actually very high in protein, vitamin A, vitamin B1, vitamin B6, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K, calcium, potassium, iron, and zinc. And then especially because of the fact that it is so high in minerals, including zinc, this herb is shown to be effective at helping to get over colds, um, flus and things like that. The zinc really helps to boost and bolster the immune system to help the body get over any little bugs it might get. So not only again, the deeply nourishing, crazy high nutrition of these herbs, but also that little extra like effectiveness of it makes it a great one to have on hand for any long-term planning of things like that. Okay, next up we have nettles. This is Urtica dioica. This is a famous herb. It is fantastic, um, just fantastically nourishing. It helps so many things in the body, and I think a lot of that just is because of the nourishment. Um, it goes in and corrects deficiencies, and then all of a sudden the body works the way it's supposed to work. Fancy that. So nettles is rich in calcium, potassium, iron, vitamin A, magnesium, manganese, zinc, chromium, etc. <laughs> like everything that I have read says it contains all of these and more. Um, and so apparently there is a nutrition profile to this that, that like is not even listed in books. And so if anybody knows any additional things that you can get from nettles, please put it down in the comments below so that we can have a full resource. But everything that I have read just kept saying and more and more and more. It's like, well, what's the and more? Like I want a list. Okay. So this is just another great nutrition Thing to have in your stash. All of these are great for kind of rounding out nutrition in any kind of food stash just because they are so deeply nourishing. This one in particular, uh, the nettles, especially combined with oat straw and red raspberry leaf, have been shown to raise iron levels in blood faster even than iron supplements when taken as a nice medicinal tea daily over the course of, you know, a few weeks, over the course of time. Um, so this will definitely correct any kind of iron deficiency anemia that anybody might be suffering from. It gives vitality and energy, probably a lot of because of the fact that it's so rich in iron. Um, it relieves allergies. It has natural histamine and um, quercetin in it which definitely helps with allergy relief. It also helps to relieve liver problems and kidney problems because it's so cleansing and so good for the body. Um, and it is a blood builder. It cleanses and enriches the blood. It also helps to strengthen and keep capillaries supple. So it's really helpful for any kind of blood, heart issues. Um, but because it is so high in vitamin K, if you are on a specific kind of blood thinner that um, requires you to watch your vitamin K intake, then you might have to discuss with your doctor first before you decide to start taking a lot of nettles. Um, but 
you know, if you're not there yet, this is a great tonic to keep yourself very healthy and keep your cardiovascular system working in tip top shape. Um, it is also deeply nourishing to the adrenals, which is why, again, I think it helps so much with a feeling of kind of from the inside out energy. It just like restores and, and lifts and does so many things. And so a lot of us, a lot of us have depleted adrenals, especially if we're big coffee drinkers like me, which I need to stop. Okay. But I just love it so much. So yeah, <laughs> if you drink a lot of coffee, you probably have <laughs> depleted adrenals. And so nettles would be a great thing to start including in your diet, especially as you begin to reduce your coffee intake. Like I need to, but we're not talking about me we're talking about you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's just great to have on hand. So moving though into oat straw, which is actually kind of a cute um, transition. You'll see why in a second. Uh, this is Avena sativa. This is rich in B vitamins, calcium, silica, and chromium. Uh, and it is also a deeply nourishing and beautiful thing. It is supportive to the nervous system. It is especially good for any kind of like nervous exhaustion. It goes in and it helps with anxiety, even low grade depression. It aids in muscle recovery. There, there's people like, like athletes have been tested drinking oat straw over time. And it was shown to repair muscles and regenerate muscles faster than the ones that didn't have the oat straw. So it's really strengthening. It's, it's one of those where it's like, nobody, nobody knows about this. So it was like every herbal book I read talks about how wonderful oat straw is for athletes in particular. So this is something that I put together in my husband's muscle recovery blend that he drinks to help him recover. Like when he was training for his marathon and all of that stuff, like he has in, you know, a blend that uses a lot of oat straw to help him with his athletic training. And now that I'm training for my 5k, I've been drinking a lot more oat straw as well. Um, the other grateful thing for oat straw is it is useful for supporting and soothing the body through any kind of chemical withdrawal. That's a cute little transition. So this includes caffeine. If you're having caffeine withdrawal, you can use oat straw to help. Um, also for things like nicotine. So this is the kind of thing too, where I'm thinking about any kind of future disaster type situation. If a person can't get hold of their, their drug of choice, whether it's nicotine, caffeine, and even some, some heavier drugs, honestly, um, it's, is it Kir Tiriana, Kiriana Low Dog? Oh my goodness. I'm going to put her name right here. Cause I'm so sorry that I'm forgetting. She works with, um, uh, people in poverty. And um, she has seen oat straw be very effective to help people get over things like, I have a little fly going through her, to get over things, um, even like heroin addiction. It's, it's very deeply supporting. And even um, Robin Rose Bennett tells a story of one of her clients, a man who was able to finally overcome a drug addiction for, for real. He was addicted to Oxycontin. Um, and he was able to do it obviously with his own inner work, of course, but the oat straw helped tremendously with withdrawal symptoms that he felt from that drug. So this is a great thing to have on hand. I think, again, the anxiety, the depression, the nervous exhaustion, the nervous system nourishing, and then also helping the body get through any kind of withdrawal of something that you're used to that you might not be able to get hold of. Oat straw is a great thing to have on hand. And you can't believe like more preppers are not talking about oat straw. So anyway... <clears throat> also, last but not least, we've got red raspberry leaves. Um, this is Rubus ideus. So this is literally just the leaves off of a raspberry plant. As far as I know, raspberry grows pretty wild, like up in Oregon, right? Like there's certain places in the country where you can find it and it's just everywhere. Nettles is the same way. Like it's just everywhere and you can find it. It's easily accessible even if you're not accessing it through, you know, like the commerce system. Um, unfortunately for me, I don't have access to any of that stuff, but I can grow Moringa here like nothing. And I know a lot of people can't get a hold of Moringa. So I, you know, Moringa is great for me. I have that in my backyard. And so <laughs> anyway, but red raspberry leaf, um, is just another deeply nourishing thing. This is especially wonderful for women to have on hand. Um, this is also nourishing very high in iron, manganese, niacin, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, and vitamins B, C, and E. Um, very rich in nutrients. Um, this is particularly a tonic to the female reproductive system, but all of those vitamins and minerals also obviously apply 
to men as well. So this is also a great one, again, with the nettles is a great combination to help deal with any kind of iron deficiency anemia symptoms. Um, I also personally love the taste of nettles and red raspberry mixed together like half and half. Uh, and it tastes to me like a perfectly smooth black tea. Like if you make a black tea that has none of the bitterness of black tea, it's like the most perfect. Mm, I love it. It's just so good. Actually, that's what I'm going to make. Well, I'm going to turn all of these into a tea after the video is over. But um, I do love nettles and red raspberry in particular because of how good it tastes. Um, but yes, it's great for women. Um, it is also helpful specifically to reduce any kind of excessive menstruation, which is, you know, an issue that could probably be potentially really awful in, you know, some situation, especially if you can't get hold of uh, products like feminine hygiene products. Which is why I think even if, if you're skeeved out by it and you're a woman and you're still menstruating, just, just get a cup, you know, because um, then you won't have to worry about running out, okay? Just, just do it. Um, it's honestly not that bad. Um, but I know a lot of women are like really like grossed out by the idea of using a cup, but I don't know. I used to cut for like seven years at this point and I love it. It's my favorite. But anyway, sorry, that was free. Sorry about that. I know like some people are like, well, I don't know. This is like, this is what we deal with. Okay. Just get over it. All right. <laughs> so this is also an astringent herb and it's a great treatment for diarrhea in particular. So diarrhea can be a killer if it's not treated fast enough. So this is a great thing to help, um, bind up or help dry up and stop kind of diarrhea and, um, digestive symptoms like leading to diarrhea. So this is great. Um, and it is also fantastic because of how beautifully astringent it is. It is a fantastic mouthwash for any kind of like sore or infected gums. So you can think about not having access to dental treatment or care. This is potentially something that can help relieve some dental issues as well. Um, and so, yeah, red raspberry leaf. Fantastic. Like who, who knew, right? Um, and so it's just, yeah. Great. So I think all of these are so wonderfully effective in very specific ways that I think are really beneficial to any kind of disaster scenario. Obviously, I'm talking more about like bugging in. So you have a stash of these things on hand. Not only will it flesh out the nutrition profile of your stash being so deeply rich in minerals and nourishing vitamins and all of that stuff. Um, so even if you can't eat as well as you would normally like to eat, if you brew, you know, use some of your water storage and brew a good medicinal tea, not only are you getting your hydration, you're getting nourishment at the same time. And I think it's just so essential and so important to have this on hand. Other things I really love about herbs in particular is how light they are. So it's easy to, you know, pack a tote, like one of my totes back here. They're so heavy. Most of them you can't really lift because they're full of things like beans and wheat and rice and all of that stuff. But I have one tote that is just like my seeds for my garden and, and those kinds of things. That one's a lot lighter. So you could stuff a tote full of herbs and it would be light and easy to transport, you know, toss into a car if you're evacuating somewhere. Um, and, and I know like that probably sounds insane to be taking herbs for me personally. I cannot, I would not be able to leave behind my herbs because those are like life to us almost as much as our food. I, I love my herbs, especially because of how effective they are. And I think honestly, out of all of these, oh my gosh, if I can only pick one, that's very difficult. I pick two. If I can only pick two, I would personally choose nettles and oat straw just because of the fact that the nettles is so deeply nourishing to the adrenals and the oat straw is so deeply nourishing to the nervous system. And it feels like those two things would be so essential in any kind of high stress situation to have something that was constantly replenishing that in your body. It's, it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's more important, I feel, than words can say. Again, I believe all of these things are things that everybody should begin to use like now or like yesterday to start brewing yourself a medicinal tea every single day, like a quart, uh, about three tablespoons um, into a quart of water and just drink it. And that will bring you all of that nourishment, all of those benefits, and then get yourself set up for, um, you know, whatever you may have to face. Um, but again, let's go ahead and talk briefly about one of the other reasons I picked these four herbs in particular. So I think that these are fantastic too, because of the fact that they are very common. 
they're in common usage, they are very well established as desirable in the herbal community, so they have very well established supply chains. Also, these are not like sexy herbs. They're not advertised by certain companies. Companies have not figured out that they're good for things or whatever. So they're not being advertised as like superfoods or whatever. Like I mentioned Moringa. Moringa has a big advert like superfood thing. People are going after Moringa right now because of how nourishing and wonderful it is. And you know, it's understandable, but I don't think there's really like a run on alfalfa right now. Do you know what I mean? Because people don't really know about it. So they're not going after it. So it's not something that we have to necessarily worry about running out anytime soon. So it's something that you might be able to stash a little bit of it here and there without feeling like you have to get yourself a whole bushel, which is also probably not beneficial anyway. Because for the most part, dried herbs will only last maybe one, maybe two, maybe three years. If they get stored like sealed oxygen absorber mylar bag away from light, away from heat, they could last a little longer than that one to two year shelf life. But for the most part, they're not something that you're thinking about storing for like 20 years. However, it is possible to turn them into tinctures or um, vinegars, especially because vinegar is especially very good at extracting vitamins and minerals. And these could be soaked in a vinegar for three to four weeks. Um, usually at least like half a jar full of the herb and then put vinegar over top and then it will leach out those vitamins and those minerals. And that will be a much more shelf stable preparation, especially actually maybe only if you use dried herbs to do the extraction. So that'll last you for several years, whereas the herb itself would not. And so these are great to have on hand, but then there's also a few options that you have to make them a little more shelf stable so that you wouldn't be taking them as teas. You would be taking them as more of a tincture, like an alcohol tincture or as a vinegar, like as far as really long-term storage, you might like to tincture a large amount and then you'd have that on hand. Um, you can add glycerin to it. You, you can make your own, basically, you can make your own vitamin tonic from these herbs using alcohol or vinegar or glycerin, whatever it is that you really have available to yourself. So that's the other thing about them that's great is it's like versatile. Not only do you, you don't have to just take them as teas. Teas is when they're still fresh and good. And I, I do teas in general, they're just good. Uh, but there's other options too. So anyway, yeah, I think that that's going to go ahead and be it for this video in particular. And hopefully that was helpful to you at all and gave you some good ideas. I definitely have other herbs on my list that I would not want to be without in any kind of, you know, disaster scenario or whatever. It's, it's going to be crazy. Like you're going to pack your herbs if you get evacuated from your house. Yes, I'm gonna pack my herbs. <laughs> Come on. So anyway, <laughs> but yeah, it, I, I just am so, I, I see so much every single day how helpful and wonderful they are. These are not just like an alternative to pharmaceuticals. These are like their own amazing thing. They, it's not an alternative to me. To me, these are the first choice not like the second choice. So I feel like the more familiar people can become with utilizing things like this in their lives, like now, the better prepared we will all be for any kind of issues that may arise, especially things like food shortages, um, where you might not be eating the most wide array of food. Something like this, again, can help fill in some of those nutrition gaps in your preps. Um, and yeah, so anyway, Again, hopefully that was helpful at all. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. I really mean that. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here bringing you a video all about four of the herbs I think would be great to add to any stash. They are so multifaceted. And yeah, this is definitely prepper me coming at you and not so much herbalist me coming at you, even though obviously those two things interact because they are the same person. But <laughs>